In this video, we're going to go over the top three things that I see people doing wrong all the time when it comes to applying to jobs. And the third one is probably one that you're doing right now. I'm going to start with one that I just heard someone say the other day, and it's such a simple one, but I think it's going to really, really help you. I had this guy show up to one of our Q&A sessions and he asked me, he's like, hey, I think that I need to do five certificates. And I knew his background. I was looking at his resume already before he showed up to the call, so I knew knew that this guy had some good data experience already, more than 10 years. And I asked him, I'm like, okay, why do you think you need to do more certificates? And he said, I'm showing up to these interviews and I can't actually get an offer. And that was the first time where I was like, okay, hold on. So you're getting interviews. Well, let me ask you this. In the interview, did they ask you for a certificate? And he goes, no, they, they didn't. And I'm like, okay, so what did they ask you? And he goes, they asked me A, Y, Z, right? X, Y, Z, this behavioral question, that behavioral question, et cetera. And I'm like, okay, great. So they asked you those questions. How did you feel it went? And he goes, uh, I don't know. And I'm like, there you go. If you don't know, it means that that is what we call your constraint. And when I mean your constraint, it means that is the part that you probably keep messing up. In. And so I dug in a little further because I didn't want to just tell him something without context. I said, okay, just out of curiosity, how many jobs have you applied to? And he goes, 200. And I'm like, in a month, in a week? And he goes, uh, in the past year. And I'm like, okay, here we go. You applied to 200. How many job interviews did you get? And he goes, I got something like five or six. And I'm like, okay, so let's do this for a second. When you look at the six interviews that you failed at, what was the actual interview round? And then he starts describing a product round, a behavioral question round, a cultural fit round, a round with a hiring manager. And I'm like, okay, so all these interviews are for very high level roles related to soft skills and communications. Am I understanding that correctly? And he's like, yes. And I'm like, okay. So how in the world do you think a AWS certificate would help? And he was like, Hmm, I don't know. Then I asked him, okay, let's just say we solve this behavioral question problem. We get in there, we look at your stories, we make sure to role play how you're coming across in the interview. Do you think you would have a better chance of acing the behavioral questions? He said, if I can get interviews. And I said, okay, well, so if we 10X the number of applications, get 10X the amount of interviews, and we prepare for the interview round that you actually have been failing for the past year, do you think you might get at least one offer. And he goes, I probably would get multiple. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. And then you get multiple, you negotiate them against each other and you get a very high paying package. And it was almost like this light bulb moment went off and I was already thinking it, but he said, he's like, yeah, this is just a marketing funnel. And I'm like, yeah, 2000 applications suck, but guess what? You only got to do it once and you only got to get one job offer. So I think a lot of people miss this point and we can't tell you how many times we've seen someone apply to hundred jobs or 200 jobs and they get discouraged and then all of a sudden they think I gotta go get a master's or I gotta go do this certificate or I gotta go add things to my resume. And I'm like, but your resume isn't the problem. If you had applied to 300 jobs and you didn't get an interview, yes, I would sit here and say your resume sucks. But he had the data and this is the mindset shift I think a lot of job seekers really haven't switched to. This isn't 15 years ago where you apply to one technical job and get one interview. We have people all over the country and we even have people offshores applying on behalf of people in the US. By the way, my company does this as well. That's how we scale applications for our clients because 200 jobs to apply to takes a lot of time. So imagine how much 2000 job applications take. And to some of you, it might seem crazy. It's like, why would you pay for someone to job apply? But again, if someone's hour is worth a hundred bucks an hour, and we're talking about doing 2000 applications, which maybe take 20 hours or 30 hours. We're talking about $3,000 right there in worth of time. And again, if you can get multiple job offers and then negotiate them against each other, you can probably ask for 20, 30, 40 extra K while you're negotiating. And if you're really high level, maybe even 50 and 100. So you don't have to hire somebody offshore to do this. My point is you just have to do more volume if you diagnose the constraint correctly. And in his situation, he had a good resume. He just needed to do more volume and he needed to actually figure out how to pass the behavioral question interview. And by the way, just a little bonus tip here before I go on to the next one. The reason he wasn't passing the behavioral question, here's the thing about that statement. When you think about what does culture fit mean, it means, hey, do we see you getting along with everybody else at this company? That's what 
that means. So if you are going through a bunch of interviews and you keep failing at the behavioral question round, please do not go do more lead code. Don't waste your time doing another certificate. Try to diagnose what is it about your communication that is turning them off during that interview round. So I'll stop with that rant and I'll go to number two. The second thing I see people do wrong while applying is there's no congruency. And I've talked about this before, but basically what congruency means is the bullet points in your resume make sense with the rest of the resume. I'll give you an example. There's a lot of people that will do an AWR certificate or bootcamp or course and say, hey, I know AWS. The problem is at the top of the resume, they put AWS. The smart ones will put AWS tool X, AWS tool Y, AWS tool Z. So they'll actually put the tools instead of just one, you know, three letter word that says AWS. The problem is recruiters aren't dumb. They know that if they see AWS at the top of the resume, but they don't see it inside the bullet points of the resume, then you probably don't don't know AWS or GCP or whatever cloud technology you're working with or saying you've worked with. So it's not congruent because what they're looking for is does your previous experience actually have what they're looking for in their job description? And a lot of times it might be this AWS tool or that AWS tool that you have in your description, but you don't actually have inside of your experiences. So make that congruent and watch your conversion rate shoot up. That brings me to the third thing. Third thing most people really, really get wrong is they hyper focus on the title. So I'll give you an example. If you are working at Bank of America, you might be a data engineer two, and you might be saying to yourself, okay, I want to advance to a data engineer three or at big tech, that's called a senior data engineer. The problem is titles aren't equal. So that's the big rule. So what I mean by that is a senior data engineer at Bank of America isn't the same as a senior data engineer at Amazon or Netflix. And oftentimes it leads to people trying to make two levels of jumps, meaning a senior data engineer at Bank of America might be one level below a senior data engineer at Netflix. And so the person that's here that thinks they're making one jump is mistakenly trying to make two jumps by going and applying two levels up at a big tech company. And the problem with that is they're basing their target off of the job title. And because of that, they don't realize that they're overshooting and so they might end up spending a lot of time with not an optimal resume applying to jobs that they never stood a chance for and i see this all the time clients are constantly like no no no, but i want this title i'm like well do you want the title or do you want the target compensation and then they're like well i care more about the compensation and the salary it's like yeah no shit. and so for the love of god put the ego and the status aside because the title does not matter okay in fact I had one client that was like, I wanna be a data analyst, I don't wanna be a business analyst. I'm like, oh my God. Business analyst is basically a data analyst, especially at big tech companies, and they basically get paid the same. We're talking about $3,000 difference, if that, right? And so, put the title aside, do your research as to what that title at that company gets paid, because again, remember, the same title at different companies, and this is especially true if the company is smaller, or startup, medium, et cetera, get paid wildly different. In fact, a senior data engineer of Amazon might get paid 300 grand, one at Bank of America might get paid 180, right? Almost a $100,000 difference more. So again, put the title aside and don't do it for the status. Don't do it for the prestige. Do your research on the compensation because 99% of you are going to care more about that than the title. So if you found this helpful, do the whole thing, like subscribe and share and click on the link below. We're going to come out with more free content on our website. There's already a bunch of free content there, but what we're going to be doing is giving away a lot of our content for free. So be on the lookout because it's only going to be applicable for a certain amount of people if they join before a certain amount of time. So please click on the link below, go to our website, sign up, and we will do our best to deliver the best data engineering education in the industry. Have a good one.